Our next speaker is Catherine Wells, and Catherine is a, a current member of the board of uh, ACF, the Australian Conservation Foundation. Um, she's an experienced environmental law and policy consultant who's worked uh, across business and the environment movement and the wider community. And she served on a range of government and community boards, including as chair of the South Australian Premier's Roundtable on Sustainability and the National Vice President of ACF. So, um, Catherine, population and environment, and welcome to the podium. We look forward to your. Hmm. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you. And Will, I just want to say how much I enjoyed that presentation. Um, I hope that I can add something to it, but I must say that I have very similar themes, so we'll see how we go. Um, uh, happily, though, I can tell you that I, I briefly flirted with the idea of um, putting up a whole lot of the sorts of charts that Will put up and decided not to, so <laughs> they've been very adequately covered. Um, I need to say, before I say anything else, that um, Don Henry offers his very sincere apologies for not being able to be here. I think um, some of you may know by now that he was invited by Al Gore to go and join Al Gore in his next training program, which is in India. It's the first Indian one, and Don has been asked to MC it. Um, and Don felt that given the state of the climate change debate here in Australia and the fact that he'd like to get Al Gore over to Australia again soon, um, it was an opportunity that he shouldn't refuse, so uh, you have me instead. Um, population, the environment, the Millennium Development Goals, that is a large topic. I thought I'd just offer you a, a few thoughts on how we might approach it and then um, set out some of the things that the ACF believes Australia needs to do in this arena. Um, uh, we've heard a lot about population. Let's see if I can... I just thought I might actually put up the environmental sustainability goal and the targets under it. And uh, really in the context of today's conference, the main thing that strikes me about these targets is this. It's quite hard to think of ways in which the world's increasing population will assist in meeting any of these targets. Uh, I mean, if you just look at them, reversing the loss of environmental resources, reducing biodiversity loss, halving the proportion of people without sustainable access to safe drinking water, um, improving the lives of millions of slum dwellers. These are all targets which the increasing pressures that are brought about by an increasing population will make it harder, not easier, to meet. So it's hardly rocket science, it seems to me, to draw the conclusion that if we're serious about the Millennium Development Goal on the environment and about environmental sustainability generally, we should, as a world, be working hard to stabilise our population. But I do want to say that I think stabilising population growth is only about half the picture. And, and Will alluded to this um, when he talked about affluence and technology. The other equally important part of the, t of the equation, I think, um, when we're talking about achieving environmental sustainability is the need to tackle the world's consumption levels, particularly the developed world's consumption levels. So these two factors, population and consumption, will frame the rest of my talk. Um, and let me explore each of them for a moment before I come to ACF positions on things. Um, I'll start with population. I think that the issues associated with, with rapidly increasing populations are obviously particularly relevant to many developing nations, including a number of developing nations in our region. Um, PNG, for example, has a population growth rate of 2.7%. And uh, as we heard from Dr. Mal Washer this morning, East Timor's population growth rate is even higher, um, and East Timorese women have an average of just under eight children each. Apparently its total fertility rate is the second highest in the world, and this is from one of the smallest countries in the world that can least afford uh, to have that sort of population growth rate. So uh, it seems to me that clearly such high population growth rates will make it extremely difficult to achieve a whole range of environmental goals, including the targets set out under the Millennium Development Goal number seven. High population growth rates are likely to lead to very steep increases in the demand for housing, transport, energy, clean water, food, agricultural land, and a whole range of social services, and uh, will consequently place enormous pressures on the environment. And as I mentioned a moment ago, often in nations which are very poorly placed to deal with such demands. But as I also mentioned a moment ago, I think that when we're considering Millennium Development Goal number seven and environmental sustainability more generally, we do also need to think 
about the impacts of consumption, particularly in developed nations with high levels of consumption. I think that consumption is relevant both as an issue in its own right and also when we're thinking about the desirability or otherwise of stabilising population growth in developed nations that have high levels of consumption. Put simply, very simply, <laughs> um, our environmental impact is a combination of our population and our per capita, per capita consumption rate. Um, and in many developed nations, including Australia, obviously per capita consumption rates are very high. We've heard mentions already today about um, the ecological footprint. I had a chart that I wanted to put up on my, I apologise for the fact that it's 2001, I haven't had a chance to update it, but the picture that you see there would be similar today. Um, ecological footprint is a measure of our per capita drawdown, if you like, on the Earth's resources, measured in the total amount of land required to supply all the resources a person's lifestyle demands. This graph shows the ecological footprint of a range of nations in a slightly different way to the one that we'll put up. And um, as you can see, Australia and the US have very high footprints. South Australia does too. Um, the world's average footprint at that point was 2.2 global hectares, and the footprint available to the world was 1.8 global hectares. Uh, so the figure that I've heard is that if every person on the planet consumed at the same rate as uh, we do here in Australia, we'd need, some, need something like three and a half planets to live on right now. Uh, I think that, that it's worth exploring this idea of consumption a little bit. Um, nations with very high rates of consumption not only have a high impact on their own environments, but they're likely to be having a very significant impact on other nations' environments. Um, and nowhere is this more clearly demonstrated, of course, than in the developed world's high consumption of fossil fuels with the greenhouse gas emissions that that entails. As you are all aware, the dangers that we face from climate change going forward will be acute if we don't manage to cut our consumption of fossil fuels rapidly. The IPCC report from last year noted, for example, the following projected impacts in Asia if we don't act to ensure that we avoid dangerous climate change. It, says, uh, it said, um, new evidence now shows that climate change has already affected many sectors in Asia. The crop yield in many countries of Asia has declined, partly due to rising temperatures and extreme weather events. The retreat of glaciers and permafrost across Asia in recent years is unprecedented as a consequence of warming. Fresh water availability in Central, Southeast and South Asia is likely to decrease due to climate change, and this could adversely affect more than a billion people in Asia by 2050. Projected sea level rise is very likely to result in significant losses of coastal ecosystems, and millions of people along the coasts of South and Southeast Asia will likely be at risk from flooding. So clearly climate change has the potential to dramatically undermine the environment and the economies and the societies of our region. I'll talk briefly later about climate change and the Millennium Development Goals, um, but for, for the moment I think it's just worth emphasising again that greenhouse gas emissions, as with other human-induced impacts on the environment, are a function of both population and consumption. So what should Australia do to try and address some of these challenges in the context of the Millennium Development Goals? In the ACF's view, there's a grounds of ethnicity, colour and the other, other grounds that you can see up there. Of course, as we all know, stabilising Australia's population is not a simple issue to address. Population growth rates are determined by combining our reproductive behaviour and our immigration, and as Professor Ian Lowe, the President of the ACF, pointed out recently, both of those are very sensitive and controversial topics. It's why we find ourselves in deep water whenever we try to hold a discussion on it. He also said, and I thought it was worth just quoting this one, the water is also muddied by some widespread misunderstandings. For example, there's a common belief that the Australian population is not replacing itself because women are choosing to have fewer children. While the average number of children per adult woman has declined to well below two, the number of adult women is still increasing. So the total number of births each year exceeds the number of deaths by about 100,000. And he said, if there were no immigration, the rate of growth would gradually slow and our population would stabilise in the late 2020s. At net migration levels up to about 60,000, the population would eventually stabilise later in time and at a higher level. But at the present levels, the population will continue to increase for the foreseeable future. I think there are also a range of um, important issues to be considered in any transition to a stable population. And uh, you know, these are all matters that you'd hope would come up in, a, in an informed public debate on.